Hi and welcome to this quick tutorial about the coronavirus animated timeline sample project that we have. So you can find it in the projects panel and I'm simply clicking it to open it up. And when I did so, this is how it comes up. There's like a lot of info, but I'm gonna um, disable this for now because uh, I will talk about that. Now, the cool thing about this project is that we can um, visualize the data over time. So we can actually show how the virus spreads over time. Um, let me, let me remove those labels and those shape layers and we can start from scratch here. Now, the cool thing is that this project comes with a data import script. And you can find it over here if you click run script file and there you can find coronavirus timeline data import. And when you click that, GeoLayers is going to import some data and it's going to ask you um, for a date range. And I'm going to go for the full date range. So that was the start date. This is the end date um, of our data that's going to be imported. And then it's going to do its thing. It's going to calculate some stuff. And there we have it. What we just imported is global case data of COVID-19 from the John Hopkins University. If you want to find more about the source, you can um, click the feature properties and you're going to find a source property. There you can, you can click open in browser and it's going to bring you to the GitHub page and you can learn more about the sources and about the API that GeoLayers uses to fetch this data. But let me close this for now. It is very easy to visualize these cases now because we have four styles. We have a confirmed timeline, we have the deaths timeline, we have a confirmed latest style and a deaths latest style. The latest, as the name says, um, will only display the current status and the timeline styles will animate over time. So I select the timeline style and hit draw features. It's going to ask me, oh, it's quite a lot of features, but that's okay, so I'm going to hit OK. This might take a while since GeoLayers is like drawing lots of shapes and um, setting lots of keyframes. Now GeoLayers drew a layer that shows exactly how the virus spreads all over the world. And I'm going to hit U and you can see that there's like loads of keyframes on this layer. And GeoLayers always starts animating at the current time indicator and the length of the animation is set in the preferences. It's always used the time that is set up at the default animation duration. So that's 18 seconds in my case. We can do even more. So we're going to place a label for uh, the USA. So I'm going to type in US here. And there we have our feature. I'm going to select the data card timeline label template. And as you can see, there's also a latest um, template, which will again only show the current status. Um, the timeline will be animated over time. So with the timeline label template selected and US selected, I'm going to hit add label. And there we go. But you might see that those numbers are mixed up a bit. That's why I placed my current time indicator here at 11 seconds. And if I have a look inside the label and I'm going to hit U on the data layer, you can see that the keyframes start right at the time where my current time indicator was. So we're going to need to push them to the beginning of our layer to match the rest of the data. If you want to move the in point of the layer later, you will always need to adapt the keyframes inside. The best way to do this is to hit you on your base animation, go to the end of the animation, then click yourself into the label 
select all of the keyframes and drag them to match the end. Like this, the animation of the label template and the shape layer below is in sync. Now, as a last point, I want to draw the depths. I want to visualize the depths over time. So uh, there's no like um, certain feature collections for depths and for confirmed. Um, all the features have all the data inside. So there's confirmed latest, deaths latest, and there's the timeline properties, um, which hold like an array of values over time. This is what drives the animated um, data-driven style. And you can see this on the little keyframe icon here. If I click the latest one, then you're gonna see only the cog rotating. And if I select the timeline one, you can see a little keyframe icon in front here. But as I said, um, you can simply select the same data set, select a different style, and hit draw features. There we go. GLAs drew a second shape layer in red that visualizes the depths. We hope these tools help you in your daily workflows and if you missed something, please hit us up.